Dear friends, good morning. Blessed Christmas. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. What a joy it is to be able to worship together and to seek the presence of God together. What a holy day it is for us to meet. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God in true reverence. Let us seek God's presence this day. And I'm so sure that we are going to be blessed by the service, that God is going to speak to each and every one of us through this service. People of God, people of unclean lips we are. Let us pray that God would touch our lips and consecrate us as we offer our praises, as we sing His praises. Let us pray that we will awake from this blindness and we would truly see the glory of God like what Isaiah did and that we would worship God in truth and in spirit and be available to God's calling and say, Here I am, Lord. Take me and use me as your will. Let us worship God together. Church, praise the Lord from the highest heaven. The sun and moon and all the stars in sky sing praises to our God. Praise the Lord from the deepest valley. The mountains and hills and all the trees in the forest worship the Lord on high. Praise the Lord from heart filled with song. The old and young and all the saints of God sing with songs of joy. Come, let us worship the ruler of heaven and earth. Church, would you join me in the introit hymn, As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. May I invite you to join me in the opening prayer by reading the words of the screen. Light of the world, shine in our lives this day. As we gather to worship you this day, give us the eyes of Simeon and the faith of Anna, that we may see the promise of our salvation. As we come before you with hope and expectation, give us the spirit of your Son, that we too may grow in strength and increase in wisdom. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Gloria in excelsis Deo. French legend states that shepherds during the medieval times would call out to one another and sing out to one another across the hills. And they would say, Gloria in excelsis Deo, which means glory to God in the highest. This is one of the most beautiful hymns ever written. And we have a Roman Catholic bishop translate this beautiful song for us. Let us sing this song together and glorify God's holy name. Glory to God in the highest.
Let us read Psalter 148, verses 1 to 8, responsively. Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord from the heavens! Praise the Lord in the heights! Praise the Lord, all His angels! Praise the Lord, all His hosts! Praise the Lord, sun and moon! Praise the Lord, all shining stars! Praise the Lord, highest heavens, and all waters above the heavens! Let them praise the name of the Lord, who commanded and they were created, who established them forever and ever, and fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea monsters and all deeps, fire and hail, snow and smoke, stormy wind fulfilling God's command. Church, let us look to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this beautiful day, this beautiful morning that we are able to worship you. We thank you for you have called us, you have chosen us to be a holy generation, the people whom you have claimed for yourself, the people whom you have loved the people whom you have known. We thank you, O Lord, for you loved us even before we were formed. We thank you for your immense grace, for your love that abounds over all these struggles, over all our limitations, over all our shortcomings over all our failures, over all the times when we have let you down. But we thank you, Lord, for you never leave us nor forsake us. Therefore, O God, we pray and ask that we will be receptive to your discipline, that we will accept the times when you correct us, 
for you are our Father. We know that you are a loving Father. You are a Father who wants the best for us. But many times, O oh God, like the prodigal son, we stray away, we lose focus. Therefore, Lord, we ask that we will be able to cling unto you, that we will be able to find refuge under your wings, that we will be able to seek you and you alone, that we will yearn to have this close, intimate, personal relationship with you. As we sang, as the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. We pray that this will not just be the words of a hymn, but this will be the true desire of our hearts. We pray that our soul would long after you, O God, that we would desire to draw more and more deeper into the well of living water. We pray and ask, Lord, that you will create in us a living spring that will be visible unto others. There will be a great testimony to others. The people who see us will know that these guys are different. There is something different about each and every one of them. That people will be able to see you in us. We pray and ask that we will be great ambassadors for you. That we will bear the image that you want us to bear. We pray, O Heavenly Father, that we will not sin against you. That the devil and the temptations that he brings along would not stray us away from you, from your love. We pray and ask, O oh Lord, that we will have the fruit of the Spirit, that we will be able to control ourselves and to be still and know that you are Lord. When things don't go the way as expected, as desired, help us to be calm and know that you are the God of nature, that you are able to control the winds and the storm. And therefore, this great and mighty God will be able to transform things, that he will be able to change the situations, that he will be able to make everything happen, for nothing is impossible for you. And here we are, as testimonies, to that great grace, O oh God, to that great love that flows and overwhelms us. We thank you for the shipment that has arrived, for the vaccines that has arrived in our land. We thank you for that beacon of hope. We thank you, Lord, for you have blessed this nation so much. The Lord, we can bring these vaccines into our land. We thank you, Father. We thank you for you have given us this great privilege as the first country in Asia to bring the vaccines. We pray and ask, Lord, that we will be able to share our blessings to our neighbouring countries. We pray, O oh Father, that we will not just keep these blessings to ourselves, for this come not from us, but from you. So therefore, Lord, help us to be magnanimous, help us to be generous, help us to be a great channel of blessing. You have provided us, you have equipped us, you have made us strong so that we can help others, so that we can raise others. We thank you for all the great blessings as we enter into the third phase 
May your grace and may your love and may your protection continue to be upon us. We pray for our Methodist Church in Singapore. We pray for all the Methodist churches. We pray for all the churches. We pray and ask, Lord, in this festive season, for your protection to be upon every church, every Christian community. We pray that the peace will not be disturbed. We pray, O oh Father, that you will guard us, that you will stand as our fortress, for we know that the devil has many ways and many means to disrupt the peace of the world, to disrupt the, the, the shalom. We pray and ask, O oh Father, that we will not fall as prey to his traps, to his plans. We commit ourselves and submit ourselves as humble, empty vessels in your loving hands. Take us and mould us, fill us by Holy Spirit and guide us, O Comforter. We pray and ask that as we celebrate the birth of of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, that we will have a meaningful celebration, that we will know the reason for the celebration, that we will be responsible and that we will be reminded of the mandate that you have given us and share our blessings, share our love and share the message of salvation to each and every one that we see. We pray that we will not be content with the salvation that we have received, but be eager to share this joy amongst others. Teach us, inspire us, motivate, motivate us, O oh God. We commit ourselves into your hands. In Jesus' name, we ask all these things and pray. Amen. Let us unite in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forevermore. Amen. Amen. God rest you, merry gentlemen. Let nothing you dismay. Oh, what a privilege it is and what a blessing it is for us to be alive this day, for us to receive God's goodness, God's grace and to face this day. Let us bring ourselves as offerings and with hearts of gratitude and thanksgiving. Let us offer ourselves unto God's hands and let us sing this beautiful song.
The scripture portion for today is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 4, verses 7 to 14. A woman from Samaria came to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. And Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our pastor, Reverend Anil Kumar Samuel, will now bring us God's word titled Living Water. Very good morning and uh, it's indeed a joy and a privilege to be gathered together as God's children in His presence to meditate his wonderful word. We have come to the final moments of the year 2020 and this is the final week, final Sunday and we are gathered with perhaps a lot of thoughts going in our minds and I strongly believe that in spite of various things that are happening around in our lives, we do have the confidence that our Lord is always with us. He is there to guide us, to guard us, and to lead us in a wonderful manner, fulfilling His purposes in our lives. Dear people of God, having heard God's word read to us this morning, today we would be meditating from John's Gospel, chapter 4. This is one of the powerful passages in the scriptures. John, the Gospel writer, he captures two beautiful events in this couple of chapters, in chapter 3, he captures Jesus' his conversation with Nicodemus. And here in chapter 4, his conversation with a Samaritan woman. And these two chapters present a dramatic contrast of personalities. On one hand, Nicodemus, a man with influence, a man who was respected by the society, a teacher of the law, perhaps he has a significant stature or position in the society. And on the other hand, this Samaritan woman, she was broken. She was perhaps lonely. Perhaps her family life was messed up. Maybe she was trapped in a sordid affair, which was perhaps so messy and beyond the human repair. Issues in marriage, perhaps brought her to the position where that there was no hope in her life. Maybe the deepest need that she was longing to be met, perhaps she sought various options, but those options couldn't really help her. And behold, she was there in that moment at the, at the well near that well in that village, probably longing for something to happen to that lady. Dear friends, in that particular moment, we see in this gospel writing in chapter 4, John's gospel, where Jesus enters into the village in Samaria. His very initiative to go into this Samaritan village was with purpose. Definitely, she, he wanted to meet this lady. Definitely to bring about something new that really transformed that lady's life. And that would meet the deepest need that no human can ever possibly would have given her to meet that need. Dear friends, when we look into this passage, the first point I would like to draw 
to our attention is a surprise visitation at the well. A surprise. Definitely Samaritan woman. We don't know her name, but certainly this lady out there near the well, when she went there to draw the water with a pot, she has seen a surprise. It was a hot sunny afternoon. Jesus was there at the well. Samaritan woman came out there with a, with a pot and Jesus took initiative to ask, give me a drink. Give me a drink. She was surprised when Jesus asked this because in the context, we understand that Jews and Samaritans, they didn't get well, all, well at all. And here, Jews looked down at Samaritans. Perhaps they were religious and social outcasts during that time. And she was talking about this particular thing. How come you are a Jew and, am I, and, am I, and am I, I am a Samaritan and lo and behold, you ask me the drink. You ask me the water. You seem to be someone really different. Someone really different. <laughs> How is this possible? But Jesus immediately, he answered in chapter 4, verse 10. Jesus answered and said to her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is it who says to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. <clears throat> that is something amazing. Dear friends, Samaritan woman was out there at the well longing for someone to quench her deepest thirst or need. But here Jesus seizes those moments to explain to her what this living water is all about. And here John the Gospel writer, he captures an event and portrays Jesus as someone who goes beyond human limited understanding of religious and social stereotypes. And he goes all the way and he takes initiative in asking the Samaritan woman, give me, give me a drink. I would like to draw our attention to this heart of Jesus. A heart that went out to that lonely soul, to that troubled person, to that person who was broken and whose life was shattered and messed up completely. The society out there must have said, hey, you are fit for nothing. And that was her fate. And perhaps she was longing if there is something like hope, who is there to grant that hope? But Jesus out there was there to talk to Samaritan woman. Dear friends, I would like to just draw our attention this morning in that unique visitation out there in Samaria. Jesus treated this lady with courtesy, with dignity, and with kindness. That was the Jesus' approach. He not only treated her with dignity and with kindness, but also accepted her the way she was. Jesus pretty well knew her background, but not even a word was uttered to humiliate that person. Jesus accepted her in spite of her background because she was made in God's image. Dear friends, this morning, even as we are here, Maybe we are struggling with various things in life. Perhaps seeking answers. Perhaps seeking hope in wrong places. But definitely this morning the word of God invites us to this Christ who has solutions for various challenges and trials that we are going through. Remember dear friends, he is the one who treats us with love, with dignity, and with kindness. We can come to him with all boldness and confidence. My second point for our meditation this morning is a savior's solution. <laughs> a savior's solution. First one was a surprise visitation. And let's see what Jesus did 
in that beautiful conversation with the Samaritan woman. <clears throat> well, Jesus saw more than the woman's sins. Her marriage, she lived her life with five men and the one whom she was living right now in this particular context was not her husband and Jesus gently and clearly he mentions that with that lady. She was perhaps amazed at the words of Jesus. Hey, how come this man knew what my life is all about? Hey, my life is, is messed up. I've, I've messed up my life. Jesus saw more than the woman's sins. He saw more than what she was. Jesus saw what she could become. That's something beautiful. He saw her need, discerning her thirst for satisfaction and fulfillment in life. She had been exploited for the pleasure of others and was disgusted with the mess she had made out of her life. She hated herself. She hated the people who looked down on her. Beneath her brazen, flippant exterior was a longing to be different, to be accepted, to experience the hope that she was longing for. In a skillful confrontation, Jesus revealed to this lady that it was him who was the watcher of love. And therefore, beautifully, Jesus says, If you knew the gift of God, and who is it who says to you, Give me a drink, he would, give, he would have given you living waters. And in verse 13, Jesus answered and said, Whenever whoever drinks of this water will thirst again, but whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. Wow. <laughs> Perhaps that pot that she brought to the well indicates a physical water. But that was a perfect depiction of her life. Actually, she was longing for someone to quench her spiritual thirst. She was longing for meaning. She was longing for someone to be with her, to accept her, to meet her deepest need that no human could ever meet. I shall instill in you a spring that is perennially fresh. If you could say it that way. Life will never be stagnant again. If you could paraphrase the words of Jesus. This water will be bubbling up in buoyant joy and excitement. <laughs> and Jesus looked at her and said, Well, if you drink from this water that I give from you will spring up something that fountain that would be everlasting. A well of water springing up into the everlasting life. This is something marvelous. Solutions for life's problems. The greatest challenge that the humans face today is the problems that come with sin. <clears throat> that shatter lives. Sin brings separation. Sin is something that creeps in and brings forth chaos. It robs away the peace. It robs away the joy. It robs away the purpose. And it robs away the focus that J Jesus intends us to have. And with this sin, we are separated from God. And thankfully, God has sent His Son, Jesus Christ, as a reconciler between God and us. And it is Him who can mend that broken relationship with God. 
<laughs> that is something amazing. Jesus at the well was speaking these few words and she came to know that Jesus was something different. She was saying, you are a prophet. She was saying, well, we are looking for a Messiah. <laughs> Those are something beautiful. But she was out there longing for a solution for the problem that she was in. Five attempts in marriage. Five people in her life. And the sixth one. What's happening? Jesus was out there to grant her something that no human could ever give. Today we see people in the history who are drunk from the wells of power. Fame, knowledge, ambition, riches and sensual pleasure always to thirst again. Only the one who has designed our lives and the human heart, him alone can meet the deepest need. And he is Lord Jesus Christ. And he is Lord Jesus Christ. We have seen the surprise visitation of Jesus in that village in Samaria. We have seen the Savior's solution. And let's see the Samaritan woman's proclamation. She says in verse 25, chapter 4, I know that Messiah is coming. He is who is called as Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. In verse 26, Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. <laughs> he breaks the ice. It's like Jesus opens her eyes by revealing himself to be the Messiah. And in verse 28 we see, So the woman left her water jar and went away into the town and said to the people, Come and see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Messiah? It was like a like wild moment in her life. All along. She was trying to dodge, she was trying to grapple and understand things. But lo and behold, Jesus said, I who speak to you am he. You're longing for a Messiah. You're longing for someone to come down, to interfere in your lives, and to do something marvelous, miraculous, to transform your condition, your situation. Praise be to God. Here, Jesus said, I who speak to you am he. Samaritan woman left her water pot and went into this village. As a changed lady, as a lady who met Jesus, as a person whose thirst was quenched, as a person who found the solution for her needs and for her problems, her joy was overflowing. Perhaps when she went running into the village called Syker, people must have thought, this lady is coming running with some message. Where is her pot? She, we saw her with the pot going all the way to the well, but she comes with something else. She carried Jesus into the village as a transformed person. And she got this message. Come and see. Is this not a Messiah? The one... Who knows all that I did? Come and see who told me all I ever did. Can this be the Messiah? Dear friends, she, she left something that was a little temporal. Maybe that was something deeper she found and she carried that and she went into it. She could not contain herself. She was filled and she was overflowing with the Messiah and the message about Messiah. I could say this, dear friends. A Samaritan lady goes into the village, her own village, 
And she did that. She knew who Jesus was. She knew that Messiah, the idea of the Messiah, was a reality in her life. Idea of this Savior, Christ, the Messiah. Our forefathers talked about it. We heard about it. And lo and behold, I see you. And I have experienced this Messiah. Nothing stopped her from sharing the message of the Messiah to the people who transformed her life. Dear friends, the beautiful thing is this, that her testimony drew many to Christ. And many people in that village, they believed in Christ. <laughs> this reminds me of the disciples of Lord Jesus Christ who left their boats, who left their nets, who left their uh, things around and they followed Christ. They left their old lives, their old ways, their old attitudes and their former loyalties to follow Christ. And those were the people that carried Jesus and this gospel wherever they went. Dear friends, if Jesus could do this for this lady out there who was socially ostracized, who was religiously kept away, whose life was humiliated, whose life was messed up, whose life was lonely and broken up, if Jesus could bring about a change and newness in her life, he could do that for you and he could do that for your family and mine. That is a glorious message that God gives us this morning, dear friends. The one who visited Samaria, that little village, is there to meet us in our situation. He has solutions for our deepest needs. He's kind and he's compassionate. He fills us with himself, with his message, so that many people could taste that living waters in you, through you, through our families, through our lives, to bring glory and honor to his name. May God bless us and may God continue to use us even as we have tasted Christ, the Messiah, the one who meets our needs, the deepest needs of our lives, and the one who transforms our lives and the beautiful thing is the one who would be with us at all times. May God bless us. Amen. Wow. How amazing is this God. How beautiful is this gift that the Son of the living God, Jesus Christ, has to offer. The living water. The lily of the valley, in Him alone I see. All I need to cleanse and make me fully whole. In sorrow, he's my comfort. In trouble, he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roll. A beautiful hymn, The Lily of the Valley. Would you join me in this closing hymn, The Lily of the Valley?
Church, once again, I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I want to wish all of you a very blessed Christmas and it is indeed a joyous time where we all can celebrate, where we all can share our love to one another. God has done great things in our life. God has done amazing things in this month and we look forward to a better, a brighter, a new year ahead. Let us look at the church news. On behalf of the pastors and the leaders of the church, I want to bring you greetings and I want to wish all those of you who are celebrating your birthdays and your wedding anniversaries. So church members, please keep one another and especially these lovely people in prayer and send them your wishes, your greetings and let us uphold one another, support one another and encourage one another and let us greet one another. Please continue to pray for them. And the church has arranged three ways where you can send your offerings and your tithings. Firstly, through check payment. Secondly, through internet banking. Third, is through the PayNow app. So please make use of these methods and send in your offerings and your tithings to our church. Next, we will be having our watch night service on the 31st of December. This will be held in church and we will not be having the online streaming of this service. So please take note that this will be held in the premises in, in Tamil Methodist Church and therefore please make your way down. I hope all of you have registered for this service. This will be a combined service, English and Tamil. So this will be held on the 31st of December at 10.30pm. The next day, 1st of January, we will be having our English and Tamil service. English service at 8.30am and Tamil service at 10am. We will be having the online and on-site service. So please come and take part in these services. We thank God that He has truly answered our prayers and, and it is by His grace that we are entering into phase three and that, that God has blessed us so much. God has granted His favour unto us. And as we prayed earlier, we thank God for the vaccination, for all the developments and therefore, please come and, and participate in the service. May God be with us. May God continue to bless us. For those who are willing to donate flowers next year, please write down your names on the floral calendar when you come for the church service. Or you may just drop uh, your offerings in the envelope when we collect our, our offering. Or please inform the church secretary if you are not able to make it for the service. 
we ask that you will make your donations available by online bank transfer as well. But please make sure that you do all these things a week before the actual uh, um, date that you wish to donate your flowers on. We have no other announcements. Let us read together the memory verse for this month. I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Luke chapter 15, verse 7. Come, let's receive the benediction. <clears throat> and now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us all now and forevermore. Amen.